Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I want to share with you how to quickly and easily film with the Sony S-Log3 picture profile in your Sony a7 IV camera. Also, to save you time and make this picture profile super easy to film with, I've created a set of video presets called Who is Matt Lutz that are made to specifically work with S-Log3. I've tested these presets extensively with the Sony a7 IV, and they look fantastic, and I will link to them down below in the video description. Getting started. Now, first grab your a7 IV, navigate to the picture profile menu, and the first thing you should do is make sure your camera is set to PP8, and that for the gamma, it says S-Log3, and the color mode says S-Gamut 3.Cine. If it doesn't say that, scroll down to the bottom that says reset, and reset PP8 to its default settings. Next, let's talk exposure. If you want the best possible image quality out of the a7 IV with minimal noise, you need to make sure that you are exposing properly when filming in S-Log3. How do you expose properly? Well, just like the a7S III, FX3, and A1, etc., you actually want to overexpose your footage when filming. Then, when you color grade, you will bring the footage exposure back down when you add contrast and saturation, which will greatly minimize any noise in your footage. Going back to your camera now, looking at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see your shutter speed, lens aperture, and the letters MM and a number. In my case, it says 0.0. .0. This MM stands for multimetering, and it tells you how bright the image is that your camera is recording. If your camera doesn't say MM here, open the menu and go to exposure slash color, metering, and set your metering mode to multi. With a traditional camera picture profile, you would want your camera's metering, which is the number next to MM, to read 0.0, .0 which means that the image it is recording isn't over or underexposed. If your camera says negative 1.0, it means that it is one stop underexposed. If it reads plus 1.0, that means it's one stop overexposed. But remember, we are shooting in S-Log3, and you need to overexpose to make sure that it is properly recording. So, you are actually going to want your camera's metering to read between 1.7 and 2.0 stops over. That is going to look bright, but I promise you this is how your camera will look its best. Also, be careful, because when I say 1.7 to 2.0 stops over, you're going to want to make sure that the 2.0 isn't blinking. If it is blinking, that means that it is overexposed by two stops, and that's a bad thing because it's too bright. Now, to help you out with exposure and make sure you aren't overexposing your footage, I would highly recommend using zebras. Enabling zebras on your a7 IV will tell you if your footage is overexposed by putting these nice black and white lines that kind of look like zebra stripes on the overexposed parts of your image. You will need to calibrate these zebra stripes to work properly with your S-Log3 footage, though. Incidentally, if you've watched my a7 IV camera setup video and downloaded my settings preset, you already have your zebra set up for S-Log3. If you haven't watched that video, though, I will link to it in the corner and down in the video description. In case you haven't downloaded those settings, though, here's how to set up your zebras properly. Go into your camera's menu, go to exposure slash color, zebra display, and for zebra level, you're going to want to go down to C2 so you can set a custom zebra level. Press right and select lower limit. Then press right again and change the number to 94 plus. Next, make sure zebra display in the menu is enabled, and as you start to bring up the exposure of your camera, either by changing your aperture or ISO, you're going to notice zebra lines appearing on the overexposed parts of your footage. Because you set your zebra levels to 94+, plus, that number is the maximum brightness the S-Log3 footage can handle before it clips the highlights and cannot recover them. So as you are filming with your camera, I would first look at your metering and make sure it is between 1.7 and 2.0 stops over, and then I would look for any zebras to appear on the back of the camera. If they show up, then I would consider what you are filming. If you're filming a person standing in front of the sunset and you have a super bright sun clouds behind them, you're probably going to see some zebras in the background, and that's okay. But if you're seeing zebras on the person's face or skin, that means that your footage is definitely too bright and your exposure needs to be darker. I would highly recommend filming some test shots with people lit by different light sources. That way, as you gain experience with watching your metering and zebras, you should get a good idea of how the camera's exposing and what looks good. All right. You've got your metering set up and your zebras. The last thing that we need to talk about is ISO. If you turn your ISO up, 
your footage gets brighter. If you turn it down, it gets darker. But there are two very important things to keep in mind whenever it comes to your ISO and S-Log3, and these two things are specific to the Sony a7 IV. Looking at the ISO menu of your a7 IV, you'll see that you can actually set the ISO all the way down to 200, but all of your ISOs from 200 to 640 all have lines on the top and bottom of the numbers, but when you get to ISO 800, they go away. This is because in S-Log3, the recommended base ISO is 800 on the a7 IV. This ISO 800 is the lowest ISO Sony recommends if you want to maximize the dynamic range of the camera. As I just showed though, you can go lower if you want to all the way down to 200, but you're going to have two issues once you go below 800 ISO. The first issue is going to be very obvious. Here's my camera filming at ISO 800 with the zebra showing where the image is overexposed. Drop the ISO to 640 now and you see the issue? The zebras are gone. Yes, if you set your camera below the minimum base ISO, zebras will no longer work and the camera will not be able to tell you which parts of the image are overexposed. This is a huge bummer, but is not the only one. The second issue, which is harder to see when filming, but arguably worse, is that if you drop your ISO below the base ISO of 800, the camera is going to start to electronically clip the highlights of your footage at a lower level, which means that you're going to lose dynamic range, which is really the whole point of filming in S-Log3. So, as a rule, I would never recommend dropping your ISO below your camera's base ISO if you can help it. Adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, and consider investing in an ND filter before dropping your ISO. Got it? Okay, we've covered the minimum ISO, but we aren't quite done talking about ISOs yet, because now we need to talk about low light performance with the a7 IV when you're filming an S-Log3, and specifically we need to talk about the ISOs that I would be careful to avoid when filming with the camera. The a7 IV, like other Sony cameras, has what is known as a dual native ISO. This means that there are two ISOs where the camera will look its best and give you the absolute maximum dynamic range that it is capable of. This dual native ISO will change depending on the picture profiles you're filming with, but in the case of S-Log3, these ISOs are ISO 800 and ISO 3200. We've already discussed ISO 800, but ISO 3200 is super important too, because this is another ISO where your video will look its cleanest with minimal noise. So, as a final rule of thumb, I would recommend either filming at ISO 800, or if you're in a low light situation, I would bump your ISO up to 3200 to guarantee you have the cleanest footage. Of course, if you need to go higher, you can, and the a7 IV is quite good and has relatively low noise up to about ISO 25600 or so. Just keep in mind that ISO 800 and 3200 are the sweet spots for noise-free footage with the camera, and you can try to avoid those ISOs in between the two if you want to avoid noise. All right. And that is how to film in S-Log3 quickly and easily with your Sony a7 IV. Remember, my S-Log3 color presets that I've tuned to work perfectly with the a7 IV are linked down below. And if you combine those presets with these settings, hold on to your beard because your footage is going to look awesome. I will link to my other Sony a7 IV videos below as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.